Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about my approach for landscape sketching and how I paint quick landscapes. And my approach on sketching landscapes in my sketchbook is basically that I want to catch the impression of, of the place that I'm sketching while keeping the process fairly quick. And I have basically two modes of landscape sketching. One is as part of my journaling page, which you can see here. So this is my nature journal and there are these quick landscapes that um, take sort of 10 to 15 minutes usually. Then I have um, a dedicated landscape sketchbook and uh, these can take between 20 and 60 minutes. So the sessions are a little bit longer. And I try to include small landscape sketches into my journal pages as often as I can. I will just show you a few examples of these small sketches. And here you can see the entire journal page. And um, I do these to stay in practice and to give an impression of what the scenery was like. Maybe if I went hiking, then I want to show what the landscape looked like. Um, and these can be these small scenes uh, or these can be uh, weather sketches like I like to do at the beginning of my sketchbook, as you can see here. And I usually use uh, a limited palette and um, broad strokes and I only add the most interesting features or uh, landmarks. And the idea is to get a record of what I was seeing, what I was experiencing uh, in a particular day and I want to include the sketch into the rest of the journal page. Here we have a whole page of landscapes. So um, sometimes I use these sketches as studies for bigger paintings. And this approach can naturally be modified for a longer sitting. So I'll show you a few of my sketches in this landscape sketchbook that I have. So uh, this is for landscapes that take a little bit longer. I usually, uh, right now I'm doing them in gouache or in a, in a mixed media approach with watercolor and gouache. And so um, I like to do these more dedicated sketches as uh, sort of these records of how I felt about this particular place. So what the atmosphere and the mood was like on that day. I try to explore light and color a bit more in these small paintings and try to really uh, sculpt uh, the scene a little bit more than I would in, in the um, quick watercolor sketches. And when I say paintings, you can see that these still are just sketches or uh, impressions, really. So they can fit into the palm of my hand. <laughs> and um, they're often not much bigger than the other ones, but they happen in a different sketchbook. And so that's, that's a, a difference for me. And sometimes they uh, don't take as long. For example, this sunset was, I think, done in about 15 minutes. And I find that drawing or painting landscapes is just a wonderful way to connect with a place and to spend some quiet time with the world around you. And uh, looking at larger patterns in nature and taking in the sun or the sky and the horizon can be a very centering activity. So I've been doing this for, for a few months now regularly. And I've noticed that because landscapes can be so vast and uh, drawing them can become a bit overwhelming and um, also a very time consuming activity. So it can be quite confusing what to leave out and what to include. And because we our eyes are trained to notice contrasts and details, we often don't have the the right tools, so to speak, for landscape painting, because for quickly sketching landscapes, you need to concentrate on larger shapes, on these large masses, and you need just to block these large masses in, and then that's it. So you can see this very well in this little sketch here. So to record the sense of a place, you don't need more than this small study. Uh, this will be enough to show how a place feels, and um, 
you can connect your memories and emotions to your sketch. And you will see that sketching will do a better job with this aspect than snapping a few photos because if you spend time with the landscape then you can form a connection and leave out things that are necessary for your story. And uh, there are of course exceptions <laughs> like uh, when you spend a particularly long time to compose a photograph. So um, not all photography is just snapshots. For example, if you take a landscape photographer, they take a long time to, to compose their images. There are also times when you maybe only have a short time to complete a sketch. And when I only have a few minutes, then I try to get in a quick tonal study with black ink. And this is actually a technique that I love very much because it reminds me of black and white photography. So I'm going to show you a few more here. And so how do I usually pick a place to start? So when a part of a landscape interests me, I look for a way to frame it, sometimes uh, with my hands. So I would do it with my hands like this, or I will take out my phone uh, and use the camera for framing my picture. And then I try to think about interesting composition, so maybe a road that leads into the image. And the advantage of starting small is that you can see what works and what doesn't. And sometimes I even do these sort of little uh, thumbnails and pencil to work out my composition beforehand. And these kind of tonal sketches are also great for this. And I usually just draw the major lines and elements of the composition and do the rest with ink or with watercolor or with gouache. So let me give you a few practical tips for your landscape paintings. Don't make your landscape thumbnail too big because you will have to spend time with adding a lot of detail that isn't necessary for catching the essence of a place. And thumbnails that are the size of a stamp or a matchbox can be very effective for figuring out your composition. Then try to keep a limited palette. Uh, it's a wonderful way to approach a landscape uh, when you think about local colors of a place or keep your palette to only three to six basic colors. You could also try to do two colors for a really limited palette and maybe add a white or a black. And also try to experiment. Try making a value study with only one or two colors or change the layout to a panoramic view or a really tall portrait frame or only apply colors in one part of the painting, maybe the most important part. So it's your decision what to focus on, you and control of the thing that you want to depict, really. And uh, the rules of classical landscape painting still apply. So uh, close objects are usually warmer and have more detail and contrast. And receding objects like mountains in the background are um, mostly bluer, paler, and they have less contrast. To, due to the atmospheric haze. So uh, if you use less intense and lighter colors when painting objects in the distance, then um, you will achieve this effect. And for watercolor, it's fine if you just uh, dilute your paint a little bit. Um, another thing is to think about natural forms. So they are irregular. So grass and trees and clouds will become better or they will look better when you draw them with a bit of variation and you can uh, adjust your brush or change your brush strokes to achieve this. It's also important to consider the white parts of your composition. So if you're using watercolor or ink, then you can leave out the whites, like the clouds, glistening water or light areas. And uh, you need to have a contrast to the darker areas. So don't just fill up the page everywhere. With watercolor, you paint the light by leaving the paper untouched. And with gouache, uh, you can add some highlights with white gouache, like clouds or snowy mountain caps. And in fact, when I paint with gouache, I um, for so for most of my longer landscape paintings, I um, apply white gouache on top. So I don't take precautions to leave the white of the paper untouched. 
And then clouds, they are a wonderful subject, but they can be so tricky to draw. You need to think about their shape before you lay down the blue paint for the sky. So clouds have shadows like every other object, and they can have a vast range of colors. They can be blue or gray or um, orange. Uh, they can have an almost brown tone or yellow or pink. Um, probably everything except very intense green. So um, they can have a green tint, but uh, yeah, so clouds can have all kinds of colors. And remember to make them irregular, like all natural shapes, so that they don't look like cartoon clouds. Um, so it's a good idea to study the objects that you want to draw when you're outside and see what kind of shapes they form. And these are sort of the basics I think of when I approach a landscape sketch. I always try to keep it fast, fun and memorable. And when you're out hiking with someone else, you may only have a little bit of time for sketching. So it's good to use it wisely or to take a good photo and memorize what's important for you in the scene and then paint it when you're back home. And that's actually what I often do these days uh, with my landscape sketchbook here. Instead of starting a large page filling sketch, try to make a few quick sketches with watercolor. Um, you will get a lot of practice this way and on some days or for places that you know well, it might even be enough to paint a small color chart in your sketchbook. This is uh, a wonderful technique to get closer to the local colors of a place. So I hope I've given you a few ideas on how to integrate more landscape sketching into your sketchbook. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear if you have more questions or more ideas. I definitely have developed a love for landscape sketching now that I'm um, doing a halfway okay job of this. And um, yeah, so let me know in the comments what is challenging for you when sketching when you're sketching landscapes. I really hope that you found this video useful. Uh, if you liked it then give me a like, feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, thank you for watching this. I hope I'll see you soon and until then happy sketching.